after the release of Super Meat Boy, which was met with critical praise and sold lots of copies, Macmillan and Tommy Rivanus began to work on a new project. Macmillan wanted to create a roguelike that drew inspiration from the level design of the dungeons in the first Legend of Zelda game, while also drawing inspiration from how Macmillan looked at religion. Each floor of the dungeon was made up of random rooms, which were selected from 200 pre-built rooms, each filled with randomly selected items, enemies, treasures and bosses. The game was developed using Adobe Flash and was released on Steam in 2011. The game was picked up by lots of players and as the developers wanted to expand on the game, they abandoned the Flash version as it had too many limitations. In 2012, Rebirth was released, which improved the game's graphics, included a new soundtrack and added new content. In 2015, the first expansion was released, which added more items, enemy types, new floors, bosses and more endings. The second expansion was released two years later in early 2017 and was called Afterbirth Plus. This expansion added even more enemy types, bosses and items for the player to discover. And that is the version that I will be looking at for this review. I got a physical PlayStation 4 copy a while back and it has been in my backlog for over two years. So it is about time that I finally play The Binding of Isaac and see how good the game is that popularized the roguelike genre. The story in this game is told from Isaac's perspective as he tries to hide from his mother who wants to sacrifice him as God told her to do so. From this point onward the game starts and only after completing a run will you get glimpses of how the story continues. While you could spend hours and hours dissecting every cutscene, item and boss to discover the meaning behind it all, I personally had no desire to do so as I bought this game for the gameplay and the story wasn't as interesting to me. Luckily the developers made the game very enjoyable to play. Given that this is my first roguelike I had to get used to the genre at first and the fact that you lose all progress and have to start over if you die was hard to accept at first. But by playing more and more, you not only become better at the game, but also unlock better items that can appear in your next run, making it easier to successfully complete the run. What is unfortunate is that the game doesn't tell you what an item does, so I had to go to the online wiki multiple times each run to be able to tell if an item is worth picking up. Because if you pick up a passive item, it's attached to you for the rest of the run, so you better make sure that it is something useful. Having to look up online what an item does can really ruin the pace of the run, so at times I was just too lazy to bother looking it up, which definitely made me lose a couple of runs. <laughs> Each run you can find keys to access treasure rooms or open chests that usually have something useful. Aside from that you can also collect coins to purchase items or restore some of your health by buying hearts. There are also hidden rooms that you can discover by blowing up specific walls. But these don't stand out from other walls so you usually just have to blindly guess where one secret room could be and hope you get lucky. There's nothing as satisfying as getting a good run with useful items, making you breeze through the levels with ease. On the other hand, there's nothing worse than having a run where you get useless items. Given that this is a roguelike, you are bound to get both situations. But those runs where you get awesome item interactions and synergies easily make up for the runs where you get terrible item combinations. To mix things up, you can unlock and play as different characters, each with their unique abilities, with my favorite character easily being Azazel. Once I started playing as him, the game became a lot more fun. Azazel can fly and has a short range attack that deals lots of damage making it much easier to defeat the boss as long as you carefully read their attack patterns. I love the ambient soundtrack with more up-tempo tracks during the intense boss fights and all of the enemy and boss designs are great, making them pop out from the background. After sinking lots of hours into the Binding of Isaac, I've just seen the tip of the iceberg of all the content that the developers put into the game. This really makes it worth your money as you can spend an entire year playing this game, seeing everything it has to offer, with challenges, bosses, items and new characters. I like the feeling of accomplishment. Even though you start with nothing at each run, you do get familiar with enemy and boss movesets and unlock more items that have a possibility to drop during your run. The only thing I don't like is that you have to defeat some bosses multiple times before you get access to more floors, which in the case of Mother means you have to defeat her 11 times before you can progress further down. But if you can see past that point, this is an excellent roguelike that is perfect for newcomers like me. And I'm eager to check out other roguelikes to see what more the genre has to offer. <laughs> 